to worship. Whether you're joining us online, on television, or on the radio, it's wonderful to be worshiping together on this Sunday morning. A few announcements as we get started. First of all, uh, we have made a decision to meet and worship together in the building, uh, in the church building, and in person starting September 13th which is normally our Rally Sunday. We'll be doing some form of Rally Sunday, but taking safety precautions, and we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. But we do know that we're going to be having a traditional worship service at 8.30 and a contemporary worship service at 10.30. And we'll continue with a fireside worship service um, that we do online and, and record and have available every week for people who choose to, to continue to worship in that way. Uh, for people who, who are continuing to, to be careful, and uh, we want you to, to, to do the precautions that you feel comfortable with. And so if you choose to stay home, we'll still have the radio broadcast and the television and online broadcast available as well. Uh, of course, we want people to be as, as safe as possible. For those who choose to worship in person, there's going to be precautions here as well. And uh, we'll be socially distancing in the sanctuary and wearing masks and, and a variety of, of other precautions that we'll take uh, to be as, as safe as, as possible. Uh, last week was the, the farewell for, for Pastor Julie and a uh, wonderful turnout for the, the drive-by open house. Thank you for uh, wishing her, her well and saying thank you to, to Pastor Julie. We continue to keep Pastor Julie and her family in our prayers as she makes this transition uh, to her, her new call and, and serving in a new Context. As for us, our staffing model, um, in some ways you won't see a, a huge change because we're keeping the, the staff members that we have in place, just increasing some hours. And so uh, Amanda Johnson, who has been serving as our education director, will be serving as our education minister uh, with a few more hours and a, and a few more responsibilities. As she starts a seminary now, uh, and uh, in fact, she's already started uh, at Warburg Seminary uh, working on her MDiv. It'll uh, be a, a four-year process, and uh, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like with internship and a few things, but uh, excited to, to have her in sort of a new capacity here. Uh, Nadia Robb, who has been our assisting minister, of, of course, she was a youth, an alumni of our, our youth program, has graduated from Concordia College with a degree in art and religion, and she's been serving, like I say, as our, our assisting minister. We've increased her hours and will increase her role as well. Uh, and we continue to have Joy McSparron, who has been our gifts minister, um, now uh, doing uh, visitations as, as well at 10 hours a week. And so uh, we'll be seeing, you know, of course, Joy's been awesome all along and, and has been active in ministry all along. So in some ways you won't see some uh, huge changes, but that will free up some of my time to be doing a lot of the, the pastoral duties and, and acts. So uh, you'll be receiving, if you're a, a member of our Saviors, you'll be receiving a, a letter in the next week or two uh, from executive committee sort of laying out that, that model a, a little bit. Uh, excited uh, for, for what God is doing and, and the future and the direction that God is leading us into. In terms of, of the building, um, of course, we, we want people in the, the building, and it's always available. If you want to come in and, and pray or, or have something to, to do in the building midweek, and uh, the, the number for the church office is on the door, and you can just contact one of the staff members, and, and we'll be sure that you get into to the building. Uh, the, few, uh, the, the building is also available for, for weddings and, and funerals. Again, with all of the precautions uh, that we have for, for, for worship as, as well. We've already had a, a funeral in the, the building, and we continue to keep in our prayers the family and friends of, of Casey Bird, whose funeral was here on Monday. We also keep in our prayers the family and, and friends of Dorothy Overmone, uh, whose, whose funeral uh, Nadia Rob uh, actually uh, had um, on, on Friday. And... Uh, we also keep in our prayers uh, Phyllis and, and Gary Laris uh, at the passing of Gary's uncle Marvin. He's been living over in the, the care center in, in Hillsboro, so we've we've gotten to know him him well and uh, just a, a wonderful, beautiful man and and important in Phyllis and and Gary's life and family. So we keep them 
in thoughts and prayers as they continue to grieve. Uh, I grew up in, in Gombeck, Minnesota, 300 people. I, I mentioned this in the, the sermon as, as well. And uh, Elbert Graftis, uh, who is a, a, a family friend from, from Gombeck, uh, passed away as well. And we keep uh, Shirley and uh, Brian and, and Eric and that whole family in our, our prayers as, as well. Uh, Shirley Graftis, uh, who we affectionately called Squirrely Shirley uh, when we were youth, uh, Shirley and, and my mom uh, led all of the youth programs as volunteers in, in the small church that I, I grew up in and brought us to youth gatherings and, and events and uh, was just so formative in my life. And uh, I think about all of the, the youth trips and activities and, and youth gatherings that, that I've led youth on, and that wouldn't have happened without uh, Shirley and, and the Graftis family. And so uh, we keep all of them in our, our thoughts and, and prayers as well. It's been a, a blessing of, of these online worship services that so many chapters of our life, um, people have been, been joining us for worship. Uh, from Gombeck, uh, Clibber Gombeck, where I, I grew up, uh, from uh, Bethel Friends, uh, where I went to, to college, and our friends from, from Tennessee, our friends uh, from Alaska when uh, we lived in, in Alaska, and of course, uh, Amanda's family in Connecticut and, and California. Um, just really has been a blessing to be, be connected with so many people in, in worship. And uh, like I say, the, the community of, of Gombeck, we, we continue to keep in our, our thoughts and our prayers. And for everybody who's, who's grieving or hurting in any way, uh, we pray for. So we open this morning with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together. We thank you for all of the chapters of our life and the people who have expressed love, who have been influences in our life. Lord, we pray for all people who are hurting, all people who are grieving. Lord, we pray that you lay your hand of healing and hope upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We gather this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening song is How Great Thou Art. I'll 
Pray together the prayer of the day as it's printed on your screen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, help us to be faithful, forgiving, showing love and hospitality, encouraging one another in faith, giving comfort to those who grieve. Help us bring unity where there is division, healing where there is pain, and life where there is death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from 1 Peter 4, verses 8 through 10. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Well, this has been an interesting week for us. Of course, you've heard the, the funerals and the, the loss of, of life that has happened this week. Uh, it's been a, a difficult week, and in our family, we've had a, a few challenges. Our 13-year-old our son uh, had, had symptoms, and so, of course, we had to have him him tested, and uh, we did that on, on Monday, uh, so we were quarantined uh, Monday afternoon through through Friday when we got the negative results, which of course we're, we're thankful for, uh, but a new appreciation for, for those who have tested positive, and we continue to keep uh, all of you in our, our thoughts and prayers, and including those uh, in our, our community and our, our congregation who have, have tested pos positive and everybody who's been affected by COVID-19, we continue to keep you in our prayers. Uh, Amanda had a bad migraine uh, this week. Uh, she's feeling uh, much better now. And uh, then the, the real challenge that, that we had this week was, uh, most of you know that, uh, or at least some of you know that, that four years ago, we, we adopted a, a rescue dog, a, a wire hair pointer named, named Paris. Uh, we knew she was a senior when we adopted her at, at 11 years old, and uh, we, were, we were grieving at the time and, and said, um, you know, this is just maybe, maybe exactly what we need right now. Um, 
And we hope to have, have six months um, of, of, of life with this, this dog who we knew had, had cancer uh, when, when we adopted her. Uh, well, we've had her for four years and uh, just was a, a wonderful, wonderful dog and just quickly became a part of our, our family. And, um, and this week, uh, Paris, our 15-year-old our dog, uh, passed away. And, um, and, and those of you who, who are, are animal lovers or, or have a pet or that lost a pet know how, how important uh, um, a pet is in, in, in a family. And that was certainly the case with with Paris, our, our, our adopted uh, dog for the last, last four years. And, uh, and, and we buried her, her ourselves um, on, on our little, little farm that, that we have just outside of, of town. And uh, the four of us uh, then stood around and, and, and talked a little bit about um, uh, Paris and uh, the lessons that we've learned and, and, and said a prayer. And so um, given the, the scripture for today from, from 1 Peter 4, it seemed appropriate to share these, these lessons that, that we learned from our dog. And some of the things that, that we said as a, a family, and Amanda, we can, we, we can both kind of jump in here uh, whenever you, you want to. Uh, but one of the things that we talked about, of course, was uh, faithfulness of a dog, the loyalty of a dog, the unconditional love that we get from, from a dog. And... Uh, you know, the, the Paris, of course, just no matter what, they're by our side. Uh, if we were outside, uh, she was with us. And uh, no matter what, just always, always loved us. And, and, and related to that forgiveness, and we didn't ever do anything uh, mean to her, uh, but she, she was deaf uh, at the end. And uh, so inevitably, we'd, we'd bump into her um, from, from time to time or, or, or step on her foot or something. And, uh, you know, she just, just never held a grudge. Always, always forgiving. Short memory. Right? Short memory. <laughs> Short memory. Yeah. Do you want to talk about? It? Oh, um, the the nudge. Um, <laughs> we um, we would call her the nudger. She'd go up to anybody that was new and anyone in our family if she wanted attention and just give a a good little you know nudge with her nose. Um, let you know that she was there and that she needed, needed attention. Um, if we'd gotten her younger, we probably would have changed her name to Nudge because that was yeah. um, that was really appropriate for her. Um, but I think about the way that it relates to us as um, as people. You know, what do we learn from um, from our dog, from our pets? Um, you know, giving that nudge, remind people that hey, I'm there for you. I'm um, I'm. Uh, I'm right here if you need me. Um, also, hey, give me a little attention. Um, I think is a really wonderful thing to learn from a, from a dog. You know, of course, hospitality, we, we hear it in uh, the scripture. Off, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. And um, for, for those of you who are, are pet lovers, of course, this is one of the joys of having a pet is, is when you get home. And just so so happy uh, to to see us every time that that we got that we got home, um, and then of course, uh, like I said, we were grieving when 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 we got her, and um, there's just something about a, a pet and 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 for us, you know, a, a dog um, about giving comfort when when you're hurting. Uh, you know, those really good dogs, um, they have a sense of of when. When you just need a little bit of encouragement, and um, you know, there's just something about about that dog sort of snuggling up and, and offering comfort uh, that is is unlike um, anything else. Um, we made note of of community, and what I what I mean by this when I, I say community is um, I, I used to to joke about uh, growing up in in Gonvik that. There were, were 300 people in Gondik, and not only did we know everybody by name, but we knew everybody's dog's <laughs> name, and, 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 and we love Hillsboro. Uh, we've made this a home uh, from the day we, we got here. We've been here for, for nine years. Uh, the population of Hillsboro is just big enough that, that we don't know everybody, uh, but we know a lot of people, and we know most of, of your dog's names as, as well, and so... Um, we, we were talking about this and, and just named a, a whole bunch of uh, people's dogs uh, that we, we know. Um, 
Glenn and, and Nancy Brewstead are, are a really active uh, couple and, and family here. Uh, I've had a couple of good dogs over the years, and um, Tucker uh, was, was one of them. Uh, we never even met Tucker. It was before we got here, but you know those dogs are just so important in people's life that, that we know about Tucker. We, we light a candle at Relay for Life because Tucker, Tucker had uh, cancer and, and died of cancer, and of course, we continue to pray for for Nancy in, in her um, battle with with cancer, and um, so uh, you know that that power of that those those dogs. Um, Jason and, and Sarah Lovis, um, Sadie was was their dog, and and, and and that dog went went blind and and then passed away and, and grieved it. Uh, Pete Lovis. Um, I love this one. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> well, they had a they had a dog named Max. And when um, Green Bees bought uh, Pete Lovis's um, farmstead, uh, the dog Max came with the farmstead. So um, it was sort of a two for one deal. Um, and I love that, you know, this, that's how it goes in a small town. You know, if you want, if you want to buy the house, the dog comes get, with it. You get the um, dog. And what a great Max dog. Max was the best. Yes, was, a great yeah. dog. And, and uh, um, you know, we have a few stories because our, do our kids were afraid of dogs when they were little and, and Max was this big German Shepherd that looked ferocious but was so gentle and just won over our kids and that's how our kids became dog lovers was by this big, strong dog, Max. Now, of course, uh, Max has, has passed away and Grindy's dog is Sky. We know that, we know that dog is, as well. Uh, Doug and, and Beth Christensen, Melby, uh, Sophie and, and Gus, uh, we know. Uh, Brenda and Greg Stallman, Ozzy was their, their old dog that just meant so much to them and, and grieved that loss. And now Fonzie uh, <laughs> is, is their, their dog, just an, an awesome dog too. Um, Chris Burgers have Dave um, and now um, uh, Jax. Jax. Yep, uh, that's a wire hair pointer too, just yeah. like the one we lost this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kittleson's. Um, yeah, Zola. Zola. Their, their old dog was Bo and, you know, again, just grieved. Uh, so so deeply the loss of, of Bo when they had to put Bo uh, to, to sleep. Gallagher's, Fallon, um, you know, their, their cat, what's their, their cat's name? Uh, battle, cat. battle Cat. Yeah, Battle Cat. Um, you'll often see Dave and, and Jody Nelson uh, walking their dog around town, and we always say hi to, to Dave and Jody when, when we see them, and honk and yell out the window, and we also have to say hi to Stewie. Um, they're, they're walking their, their dog, Stewie. And, uh, and then just one of my really fond memories is uh, for, for years I, I would visit uh, Audrey Waters in her, in her home once a month. I'd bring her her communion. And uh, her dog Bandit, um, it just, it, it just a, a, an, awesome, an awesome dog. So I'd always bring a, a treat and, and give communion to, to Bandit as well. And Bandit would sit on my lap the whole time that I'd sit and visit with, with Audrey in her, in her home. The power of pets. Um, and we could go on and on. Uh, I, I know we're leaving a whole bunch out, uh, but that was just sort of off the top of our, our heads. But, um, you know, I love that about a, a small town. And um, one of the, the stories about community um, and, and animals and dogs and care for each other was uh, Paris, our dog, um, several years ago when, when we lived in, in town, um, got lost in a snowstorm. Oh, this is so silly. I am um... I was just going crazy. It was like 20 below, and there was a blizzard outside, but I had had enough of being inside. I was getting a little cabin fever. I said, I'm gonna go for a walk, and um, Joe and um, our daughter Charlie uh, both said, well, we'll go with you, and wherever we go, Paris would go, our dog. Um, and so I, we went for a short walk, but Paris thought she knew where we were going, and um, you couldn't really see you know, 10 feet ahead of you, and she went ahead of us, and lost us somehow. And so there we were without our dog. We'd only gone a couple blocks on around the block and came back to the house and Paris didn't come back. I sent out a text message to half a dozen friends and pretty soon- I think on Facebook posted it because there were, there were like a dozen people. But the people that we didn't know that were out looking for our goofy dog all because of, I just needed to get out. In a, in a blizzard, <laughs> looking for a dog. And then, of course, Mason Richter, who now has graduated from, from high school uh, this spring, but, but was a high schooler at the time, and uh, found, our, found our dog, found Paris, and, and brought her home to us. And what a testament to community. Um, not only do we, 
we know each other, we know each other's dogs, and, and even when our dog was missing, um, we're getting all these text messages from people, and, and we're seeing them as we're driving around, and they're driving around looking for our dog, and uh, gosh, and what a community. A testament to the, the character of the community, you know, how do we treat the least of these, we, um, being so kind to our dog. Our dog, <laughs> dog. And, um, and of course, this sermon isn't about hairs. The sermon isn't about a dog. This sermon is about faithfulness and love. Our faithfulness to each other, our faithfulness to God, and God's faithfulness to us. We have a God that forgives, a God that loves. Now in English, we have basically one word for love, love. But, but in Greek, that the, the New Testament was, was written in, there's three different words for love. Eros, which is a, a romantic love. Philos, which is a, a brotherly love, a sisterly love. And then there's agape, which is unconditional love. And when scripture talks about God's love for us, the word that's used is agape, unconditional love. We have a God that loves unconditionally. We have a God that forgives. We have a God that gives comfort. We have a God that so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. When our dog died, I turned to the people that, of course, mean the most, Amanda and the kids, and my own parents. And I'm talking to my dad on the phone, and I'm crying, and my dad's giving me comfort, and he said, I know it's a terrible thing. And, and of course, he's been through it several times him, himself. And he said, it, it feels horrible right now, but grieving the loss of a dog doesn't last as long as grieving the loss of, of a human. And, and that's true. Already, two days later, of course, we're, we're feeling much better uh, about the loss of, of our dog. We can never compare a, a dog's life to a human life. And we know that many in our community, in our congregation, on, and people who are joining us online, are grieving deeply the loss of a loved one. But because of the gift that we receive, from God in this unconditional love, a, a gift that we receive in Jesus Christ, the gift of eternal life, we grieve differently because we grieve with hope. We grieve with faithfulness and forgiveness. We grieve with community. We grieve in support and encouragement of one another. We grieve in hospitality. We grieve giving comfort to one another. Above all, love one another deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. To God be the glory, now and forever. We'll sing together our song of the day, Love Will Hold Us Together.
It's waiting for you Knocking at your door In the moment of truth When your heart hits the floor You're on your knees Love will hold us together Make us a shelter to weather the storm And I'll be my brother's keeper So the whole world will know that I'm alone This is the first day of the rest of your life This is the first A, a pet or if you had a, a pet uh, we would we would love to hear about it so uh, post it on uh, the the church Facebook page or one of our Facebook pages uh, or the, the church website or, or send us a, a, a text um, comment on the service about it. comment on the service about it we, we want to hear about those those pets and what they what they mean to you and uh, and we ask God to, to bless our, our animals and and for us to learn those lessons about companionship and, and nudging people, encouraging each other, and hospitality and, and faithfulness and, and love. Uh, thank you for, for joining us for, for worship this morning and um, look forward to the good things that God has in store for us. Go in peace, serve the Lord, helping people experience the love of God. Go in peace.